It is a rainy day up here in the mountains, and much has changed outside of Hexham. Strong walls have been raised to fend off trebuchets, but inside our guests do threat. As you see, they don't take so kindly to Jonathan's lovely cooking. The man works very hard in that kitchen, yet we knew this would happen, and so action must be taken. But before any of that, we have a guest at the door. Kia ora, Legionnaires, Rikon here, and welcome back to Going Medieval and to Hexham, our cannibal keep. And a lot has happened since you've last seen us here. Obviously, a fair amount of work has been going on outside. And this isn't the final design by any means, but it's a start of something special. And of course, these merchants, well, they, they don't learn. This one is from the Circle of Avalon. Edith and Lelion, might I have you out here, please? We need to uh, pay our respects to our guest. And of course, we'll be sure to make this nice and quick. Oh, there we go. Oh, well that was over with a very <laughs> strong strike. Looks like Edith got a bit of a bonk, so we'll make sure that you actually get uh, seen to there, Edith. But yeah, wow, they're getting stronger. That was uh, just one really good strong hit. What I was going to say, um, you might have noticed running past that merchant, is Ingabel. Ingabel can now enter our keep. Edith has done a fantastic job in training her in both war and in hauling. So we're going to see her running backwards and forwards, uh, bringing things to stockpiles. And we can see that everyone is very happy to have a drink after a long time without one. Garwolf, we are grateful for your gifts. But right, yes, the extra colonists, they need to be dealt with. And I think we're probably going to do it in one fell sweep because they're going to be getting more and more upset if we have a look at Dunstan here just just to see what the general person might experience here I mean it's it's mostly that it's the cannibalism that puts them off we're not surprised so once these two have settled down a little bit we're gonna to have to take action now I think we're gonna to have to try and make this as quick as possible so Dunstan we're gonna get you out here Colin we're gonna get you out here as well and uh yeah, we're gonna kind of do it like this, I think. Start things off. And they are gonna fight back. You know, they won't go down without a fight, but they are... They're certainly going down here, there's no questions. Uh, they don't have the armor, they don't have the skill, and they, uh, they don't have the weapons to survive this one. Well, that's the first. Lelion, let's uh, continue the attack over here. Dunstan's down. And that just leaves Jillian. As much as it pains me, Rikon, to do this, I think it's necessary, especially for this to be the challenge that it's meant to be. All that bad luck, all those attacks, it's because we've let mortals into our midst. No longer. Jillian, good night. Now let's have a look at our jobs. First of all, Edith. We want to make sure that you are convalescing. She should be doing that as soon as soon as she's done praying. And that means that Lelion will actually get to tending her. It's going to be important to have that happen. I think for some reason she wants to go and convalesce in these beds. So we're going to, we're going to deconstruct them because uh, they're no good. No good for no one. Well, it looks like, yeah, we're able to get those wounds tended. Good, good. Edith, you're very happy, aren't you? I mean, even though... Friend died times three, killed someone times two, and uh, yeah, that <laughs> that definitely helps. So now that we're just back down to three, we need to be careful with how we organize our jobs. I think what we're probably going to end up doing is days of hauling. So yeah, like every even day, we might have them just hauling for like the first half of the day or something like that and seeing if that will work out, rather than having just a dedicated hauler. Although in saying that, 
we might still be able to make that work. Obviously, it is going to be important for Jonathan to be the cook. At the same time, I would love for him to start to get into carpentry and tailoring because he's passionate about both of those things. So we're going to put them on two for now. He is our main constructor as well, so we probably will lose them a little bit to that. In actual fact, with the amount of food that we have stashed away here, we're never going to be able to eat all of this with just three people. So we're actually going to make cooking a low priority now. I'd much rather him improve his skills at uh, bow making and also at tailoring. With that in mind, Edith is passionate about smithing and it'd be really nice to see her get better at that. So that just really leaves Lillian as a possible hauler. So we are going to have her hauling for now and when we do need mining she'll be doing it and when she's not doing any of those things she'll be back researching. It's so peaceful here with just these three. <laughs> what I'm really interested to see is if the number of settlers we have affects the amount of raiders or attackers that come our way, or if it's based upon the wealth of what we have, or just time. That could be the other thing. It could just be as we get further into the game, more and more people are going to come our way, which is going to make this challenge all the more challenging. I do enjoy the tension that comes from the possibility of losing that possibility is most certainly here. It has been a little bit since we've had a look at research. I wouldn't mind going into Armourer next. I feel like if we are running with limited folks, protecting them, keeping them alive for longer is going to be better for us. So the Armourer's table, it's pretty big. I kind of feel like it would fit in quite well at the end here. I've noticed that we have a large excess of leather, so it'd be really nice to put in some leather banners let's see and and as you know you can imagine where the leather has come from you'd be right in thinking that make sure that we have some on the inside here as well i do love how many wolves hang around our place it's like they know they're gonna get a meal if they're here for long enough oh and we've put in some nice chests they can really store whatever they want in them, but it's just to give the bedrooms a little bit more of a uh, lived-in feel. Jonathan is getting our armorer up and ready, which is going to keep Edith even busier. So she's been working over here at the moment, trying to perfect some short swords. We've got a Badish that's going to be coming along after that. Uh, I am hoping her skill will have improved a fair bit by then. She's on four already. So yeah, we don't want to be wasting too much in the way of resources. That's why I think short swords are probably the best route to go there at this stage. And then, hmm, light armor or gambeson. And this is using tailoring. So yeah, that'll be a Jonathan job then. Huh. I do wonder if we want to actually make any of these at the moment because it's effectively the same as what we have at the moment. I think we'll probably hold off. Wait until we get some better research. Ah, oh, yes, that's fantastic. That's our first banner. I hope you like our emblem. I feel like it's uh, it's fitting, huh? Something that's super cute. When there isn't any hauling to be done, Ingabel just kind of hangs around Edith. It's adorable. And what's great is that as soon as Edith is done with something, Ingabel will just grab it and take it to where it needs to go. And it's Lillian's birthday, 25. And uh, yeah, Ingabel sleeps next to Edith too. Super cute. I mean, it would be great if we could potentially tame a dog for each of them. We do have wolves. We could try and tame you, hey. Hmm. I imagine it wouldn't be easy. <laughs> Let's try and tame one of each. See if that would be possible for us. Well, Edith is trying. I think with a with a pie? Looks like a pie. Hey, successful. I'll be damned. Okay, well, how did that go? 23% tamed. Good stuff. What is what is your skill at that? Oh, oh, it's retaliating. Ah, are you you are going to attack, huh? Hmm. I guess that's to be expected. Edith, you should be able to handle yourself against a wolf, right? I I don't know. We might need Lely on here, possibly. Oh no, this thing, this thing's injured. It's going down. One more strike. Yeah. That'll do it. And hey, it gets you some melee skill at the same time. Let's just find another one to try and tame. Yeah, look at those. Nice and intimidating. What we will do with the walls eventually is we will mine out these sections and replace them kind of one by one with some limestone block walls. Just for uniformity, 
But right now, that isn't a uh, priority for us. Look at this lovely candelabra we've got here now. While he's building up pretty high, nearly at the top of these staircases. Just so it's known, once we have actually finished working on this here, we are going to be removing this staircase just so that our enemies can't make use of them to climb up and get above us. And we have a caravan. Where are you from? Church of the Third Coming. You guys, you guys hate us. Well, I'm glad that you're sending a, uh, a caravan, <laughs> even though you do. And while they do have lots of folks with them, we aren't going to be antagonizing this group. You know, not while they're all together like this. We've actually got a lot that we can trade. We have nearly 800 leather, most of it human leather. Although they're not going to know where that came from, are they? No. So we'll see if they have anything of use. Ideally, some ale would be nice. But then again, oh, you know what? Monks. Hey, monks could have some booze. We shall see. And I think because it is a passion of Edith's, she is going to be the one that ends up doing the, uh, the talking here. So let's do some bartering. So I think the easiest way to do this is just to sort like this. It'll show what we have, what we have the most of. Well, over here on this side, this is this is their items. That could be enough to get us started to, yeah, actually making more ice blocks beneath. So I'll say yes to that. We've got a wolf carcass that we can sell, actually for a decent amount. So yeah, yeah let's definitely sell it off. Also a fox carcass too. Sure, we're not going to be eating it. <laughs> and actually going off of that, it might be worth us just selling the regular roasted meat that we have so we'll give that all to you too we do need to keep in mind that they only have so much storage so we need to watch out for that but now figuring out what we actually want to buy from you what do you have the most of barley so we could look at making some of our own booze yeah let's go and acquire a whole heap of barley obviously looks like we can still get some other bits and pieces vinegar is good for preserving we could grab some of that just to level things out, I think. The red currants can also be used for booze. Maybe we'll go for that instead. Yeah, whole heap of red currants. Looks like a good trade. We shall accept. It's only just over. Okay. Speechcraft of 13. And our alignment went up ever so slightly. Look at that. We got a lot to get hauled downstairs. We're going to take the ice block right away oh don't mind the body in the pantry yeah don't don't mind that at all so now that we have an ice block in here i'm hoping that the temperature will drop down a little bit more we're at 1.5 degrees in here at the moment and yeah we still can't craft it's got to be real cold it looks like hey as soon as it hits winter i imagine we'll be able to do it or if we get a cold snap Edith does have a little ways to travel, it looks like, to tame these wolves, but, uh, oh, okay, it didn't retaliate. How, uh, how are you looking? 12%, okay, so you're one of the males. All right. It's not an absolute must that we tame them, but they'd be neat. Looks like we're going to be swapping out some helmets here. I didn't realize that they were using kind of subpar helmets, so what I've done is I've created a, a new setting that it can be under and so what that looks like is as soon as things get too damaged they're going to take it off and swap it out for something else and that seems to be working out at the moment and you know what we're probably going to have to do the same thing for armor as well yep looks like they're going to be dropping off all of those gambesons i hope that there is an alternative oh boy it oh maybe maybe yeah auto equipping okay okay we we might be in the clear then yeah Right, okay, looks like everyone is armoured up. Jonathan isn't armoured up at the moment, so that's something that we might have to have a look at, as in, you know, making a gambeson over here. We'll just go and make until we have three good ones. I'm going to have to set up some recycling jobs here. Oh, hey, there we go. Jonathan did actually put something on. Just light armour for now. And you know what? <laughs> We're probably going to have to do the exact same thing for shields and weapons as well, now that I think about it. Okay. All right, I'm going to set that stuff up. Okay, I I think that will do it. That should be everything. And it does look like Leon is going to have to grab a new blade of some kind and a new shield. Oh, and she's got a falchion. Cool. Hey, all right. Good job, Jonathan. That looks like the last staircase to be put in place. Good, good, good. Uh, we'll let you get down and then we will go and deconstruct these ones. So now, because we are 
down to the three, I think we need to think about how we are going to defend this base better going forwards. And I think having stages is going to make a big difference. So we're actually going to go and extend the wall out to here. We'll leave space for a door in the middle. And for this door, I really would like to go for a reinforced door. So the question is going to be, are we going to be able to shoot from here at attackers over there? I'm not sure whether or not we will be able to. And I think that's why we're probably going to want to try and extend a balcony up to here. So we'll look at putting some Merlons across like so. We might even be able to do a structural beam underneath. And you know what? The limestone block arches actually look quite nice. So we will need to, in some way, get a staircase that'll take us up to this level. I think what we'll probably do is just kind of like dig out a stairwell along the side here. Oh dear, you know what? I think we actually might need a staircase here because Liliana's now... Uh, actually, I don't know if you are stuck. You might be able to get down these staircases here. No, no, she'll, she'll be stuck. So we will go and chuck a staircase just down at the bottom of this uh, just while we are working on these other bits of construction. Oh, no, she can, she can get down perfectly fine. We don't need it. All right. <laughs> I have to say, I really like the look of that arch. That's going to look great when it's complete. Oh, hey, it's cold. And ah, yes, excellent. Ice blocks. That's it. All right. So we pretty much want to try and see if we can fill this area up with ice blocks at least oh right it started the process let's hope it just stays cold over that whole duration and we'll just fill this up with ice blocks and then our preservation process will be complete we really won't have to worry about our food lasting long term anymore uh let's make sure that we're swapping on to our summer clothes now because it looks like we're on a little bit of a mix oh <laughs> And I do not know why this is happening. Uh, everyone's just sleeping in the same room tonight. Is it because they're so cold? Could be. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's four degrees in here. They've been able to sleep with that before. Edith is certainly looking chilly, though. Yeah. Appropriate clothing. All right. Okay. We can do that. Let's have a look at creating some winter clothes here. And we'll just say we'll, we'll do it until we have three. And let's make them out of leather because, you know, we've got ridiculous amounts of it. Oh, hey, our tree farm is actually ready for harvest. Getting a lot of wood from each of them. Worthwhile. Ah, some ice just dropped out. And the temperature did lower. 1.6, 1.9. You know what, Sinus? <laughs> they keep on wanting to sleep in the same room. I think we probably need to get them some extra warmth. I mean, this is autumn. This isn't even winter. And they were okay last year, but I think just to make things easier... We'll chuck some braziers in there too. I have been enjoying seeing Jonathan's tailoring skill going up as well. It takes him a while to get one of these uh, sets of winter clothes out, but eventually everyone will be decked out. Right now, Edith is the only person who isn't actually wearing any. She does have a light armor on, so better than having no gear at all. Oh, Humphrey barking up the wrong tree. He was found faint and bleeding by a citizen of Hexham from the axe and shattered lumber. Humphrey had clearly experienced a wood cutting mishap. Would they let him stay and heal? Let's see, eh? You're great at mining. You've got some culinary skill. A deadly grave digger. Come on, surely you've got to be the one. And oh, you are quite injured, aren't you? Okay, let's see. <sighs> no good, callous and stout. I'm almost tempted to just let him, uh, bleed out but Lilian has uh, other ideas it's interesting Humphrey is so close to being the kind of person that we would want here he is callous unmoved by human mortality flesh is a mere commodity once the soul has fled he might be able to work maybe we'll see if long term he can uh, deal with eating what he's eating and what not he seems to be okay at the moment. Maybe he can actually eat our food. He just doesn't get bonuses from it. And if that's the case, then he is not an immortal, but you know, I think in the eyes of everyone else here, he is at least a proper friend. We'll keep our eye on him for now. Humphrey Bolum. Now, for these archways that I'm trying to get built, I think we're gonna have to get a little bit creative. I believe we're gonna need some temporary stairs to be able to actually reach them. 
It looks like we can kind of do that in the middle. And then in here, we'll have a look at chucking that. Yeah, like so, just so we can kind of get a little bit higher to work on construction projects. Okay, yep, that stair allows us to reach it. Just change colors. We should be able to complete all of that construction there. Oh, and we have a lone traveler, a merchant wandering on. Let lay. Or let a. <laughs> let a Lee. Let a Lee. We got there. Let a Lee. You are from the church. Well, you're armed, but you're walking into a very dangerous place. Ah, and she's in here already. Well, let's get the ladies together and do what we do. We could ask Humphrey to join in here, but they get more joy out of it. And so. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we let them practice their melee skill to get better at what they uh, what they do. Nice evasion there. Oh, okay. I think that could have been either. Actually, you know what? I think that was Ingabel. We got some ale and a tasty merchant too. Isn't this <laughs> a nice sight? Oh boy. Everyone, everyone just cramped into this room together. Even though all the other rooms, they are nice and warm. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. I can confirm Jonathan is in there too. They're just tucked in underneath the bed. <laughs> I never did get a chance to talk about this outside here. So what I've seen is folks can stand on the side and attack the doors. I'm thinking by limiting the space here, we can only have, you know, one or at least two people attacking a door at the same time. Meaning we'll be able to keep folks out here for longer. Humphrey is looking pretty good so far. The, the only thing for us to really consider about Humphrey though is we haven't had him on a strictly cannibal diet yet. I think we're going to put him on it just for now to see how he reacts to it because we might have some I think we do still probably have some regular food in there that he's having. He could have just been eating the smoked meat for all I know. We need to know for sure. Another tricky bit of construction here but I think we've got it down. By putting this stair in I believe we are now going to be able to uh put in this nice archway up the top which will allow us to just level out the floor. We are also looking at building some uh, flooring here so that we can get a staircase on this side which is going to start to run down just to this point here and I think that's where we're going to allow folks to uh, head on up to this top level. You might notice that there are these kind of like gaps up the top here and that's from when we were first digging out the space. How? I have no idea how that happened. Where are you? Ingabel's just right here. Were you old? I, I'm so sad. How and why? I mean, it's perfectly warm in here. There is no reason that should have happened. Ingabel, I'm so sorry. I don't know if we're going to be able to, but I wouldn't mind making a pyre out here for Ingabel. She's been super well fed recently because she's had access to the cellar. She's been warm inside. I, it, it must be old age. There certainly weren't any injuries and we had no notifications that anything was amiss. All right, Jonathan is starting to raise the pyre now. Looks like it can only be human bodies, huh? The only other option would be a grave. Hmm. And you know what? I feel like it's, it's worth trying. Maybe by this tree? Yeah, that's not a bad spot. I bet it's gonna be human only again, but yeah, looks like it. Well, we are just gonna kind of leave it like that because this is a marker for Poringa. Oh, Jonathan, bloodlust. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. So he is just the same as Edith and Lillian now when it comes to the fight. Okay, happy birthday. Hey, you know what? Humphrey might be able to take over the cooking, at least in a temporary sense, because Jonathan, amazing cook, but I feel like that would work out quite well for you because then Jonathan doesn't need to worry about cooking going forwards, only when we really need him to make some nice meals for us. There we go, we can actually put a staircase down now. And a cold snap. Oh boy, yup. It's going to be very, very cold out, as birds even freeze to death. Oh boy, yeah, that cold is brutal. Let's get her back inside. Minus 35 degrees. Sheesh. 
yeah, they're not going to be able to be outside for long. At least here in their rooms, it is still really nice and toasty at 25 degrees C. Hey, it's been a little while since we made that change, and Humphrey doesn't seem to be upset about the whole cannibalism thing. We might have a mainstay here in this lad. Humphrey Bolam. Yeah, so callus, that'll be useful. And stout. He jokes that his ample belly is a great asset, storing energy for lean times. All right, Edith is still trying to tame. Huh. Well, it looks like the wolves are kind of staying around at the moment. Let's have a look at you. You're the first one that we tried to tame. Zero percent, huh? I don't think it's going to happen. We'll let that dream go for now. Okay, so we can put the staircase in, but it can't be placed under a beam, so... We'll have to try and shift this main one here. Ah, and the cold snap has ended, thankfully. Because I tell you what, it has been difficult to work on all of this outside, but we are getting there. This thing is starting to look like a proper fortress. Ah, oh, the snow's thawing a little bit there, but don't worry, it's, it's going to be back. It's not going anywhere. We have nearly got the roof completed at this point, and I am a fan of how well it naturally sits into the mountain. We obviously have all these little staircases on the side. They are going to be removed once we've finished construction up there because uh, they're, they're literally just for ease of access at the moment. We still haven't managed to figure out how we can get this staircase in easily. I'm trying to expand out to this point so that we can get this last little bit mined. I think we just need that one and then we should be good. We are just going to have to build a little bridge here. So I've put in a wooden beam. And we're going to put a platform just so we can make it across. We're going to have to mine out that square and then we're going to be able to get to that one down below. Here we go, Humphrey. That's what we like to see. We're getting there. Also, that's a that was a strange procession of animals <laughs> running up along our keep. Yes, and he can reach that square from here. Okay, that should be the last one before we get this staircase down. Well, it also led to some collapses, but I, <laughs> I think... I think that's it. Let's have a look and see. Uh, blocked by limestone. Okay. We might need one more. There we are. Look at that from the outside. Smooth, slick. I like it. We still have this opening here because we haven't completed the staircase on the inside yet. And for some reason we still seem to be having trouble with building that. That staircase will go though. Ah, that's it. That's it. We can build the staircase now. And I know it's a little difficult to see from this angle, but Humphrey has just completed it. Amazing. And so our settlers can now make their way up here, along to the other side, and all the way up to the top battlements. Meaning, of course, that we can actually seal off the side here, and we can start to get rid of all of those staircases. But I think that's enough work for one day. And so, as the sun rises on Hexam, I'd like to thank you all for joining me for another episode here. I have to say I'm super happy that we have a new permanent settler in the form of Humphrey. Looks like we can bring on more than just cannibals, as I feel he perfectly fits in with the rest of them. I can't wait to see how this holds up to our next siege, as let's not kid ourselves, there are definitely folks out there that want to see us dead. They'll just have to try harder. And so, I ask you all, if you enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. For now, I have been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, stay tuned. And finally, I'd like to extend a great big thank you to the Legion on Patreon, who continue to make this cannibalistic content possible.